and welcome everyone to the second session of Avenger. I actually don't have any announcements this time, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into things. Uh, Captain, I believe you have the opening log today. March 28th, 2162. After Starfleet's interrogation of Captain Bollier, the Orion charge of the weapons cache, or, I'm sorry, the Captain in charge of the raid on the weapons cache, it has been revealed that there is a dark station nearby the former depot. This station is hidden within a particular dense asteroid field and is used for all manners of illegal activities. The Avengers' job is simple. Starfleet wants me to, or wants us to, get to the station and shut it down any, by any means possible. My plan is often a direct approach. Due to too much planning... I have discovered can often be lead to unnecessary complication in a stressful situation. I will rely upon my ship and my crew to assist me in being successful for Starfleet. End log. Alrighty. So, our uh, first scene is actually going to be in sickbay. And we'll say, Captain, you have gone down to check on your chief medical officer, and since this is the first time that our CMO is here as a player. Uh, if you could uh, tell us a little about a uh, little bit about the Master Chief uh, description, physical description, anything we should know about him in general, and then yeah, you can do your scene. All right. Um, Master Chief for Lizza is a Denobulan and Ryzen hybrid. Uh, he was born and raised on Ryza. He served on an NX class during the Earth and Romulan War. And he's about probably about uh, six feet tall, rather slim, and he has uh, the Denobulan ridges, but they're very much less pronounced. And he has some slick black, eh, slicked back black hair. And uh, there are some other things in his backstory, but there's that stuff that might come up later. So we'll figure that out as it goes. And and just because it's on his token, what has he got around his neck there? Um, that is a Horgon, which is the, if I'm remembering correctly, the Ryzen symbol for fertility, but it means some other things if you're on Ryza. Mm-hmm. So hold on. What I'm imagining here is John Travolta with some ridges. <laughs> it, it honestly kind of does look like him. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm just I'm just thinking about you know Saturday Night Live time so, right? Good to know, little dangling on the neck. Okay, good. And also, you're way taller than me, even though I'm tall for a, uh, to, for my race. So this yeah. should be interesting. All right. Well, Captain, you uh, walk into sick bay to see not John Travolta. Uh, <laughs> he's doing something <laughs> with test tubes. I don't know with what, but that's your scene. Doctor. And he kind of jumps for a bit and turns around. Ah, uh, Captain Voss, it's a pleasure to finally meet you. This is an interesting situation. I wanted to get some things clear, uh, cleared out, uh, cleared up in your record. Is there a particular reason why you chose to not have a commission being a doctor? Um, well... I figured, oh, jeez. See, out of character, I didn't think about this too well. We'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> um, honestly, Captain, I was offered one, but I figured possibly that being an enlisted officer could give me some sort of authority, seeing as I'm a Master Chief on this ship, but of course, I won't try to test yours, sir. Well, I appreciate that. I have no problem that you are enlisted. I, for the most part, have dealt with many enlisted in my military service prior to Federation. Uh, I often find they're this enlisted to be more forthcoming and less political. So I have no problem with that. I just found it odd. Because ultimately, 
you're going to have nurses that are going to have commissions. So I was just curious. What are you well, working sure. on? Uh, just some uh, routine stuff. Um, if you wouldn't mind, actually, Captain, I'm actually not all that familiar with uh, Tellarite physiology. If I could actually get a quick scan of you, if I may. Quick. I will, I will deal with a quick one, yes. All right, and I'll pull out my medical tricorder and take a quick scan of him. All right, well, since you made it a task, let's do a uh, reason medicine difficulty zero, so free momentum. Mm. All right. Um, I think I might have a focus that applies here. Uh, either diagnosis or xenobiology? I would say both could apply in this situation. All righty. All right. Hey, that's very nice. You start off with three momentum. Very nice. Uh, so, Voss, is there anything uh, amiss with the captain? Does he uh, Is he maybe recovering from a cold? Because uh, with three successes, he probably knows almost everything there is to know about you medically. Uh, physically, physical stature for... Uh, hold on. Give me one second. I got something. I just want to check something on my screen. Uh, for Tellarite of near 60, he is very fit and trim. However, your scans probably detect several scars and burn areas, small burn patches that are covered by the uniform, which would be simple repairs. For mm -hmm. today's technology, uh, but they're not. Kind of looks quizzically at you. Um, is there a reason you still have the scarring, sir? That's a personal choice, Doctor, and I prefer to leave it at that. Of course. Other um, than that, he's uh, a pinnacle of 60 year old Tellarite health. Right? Well, uh,. Other than the scarring, which obviously your personal choice, as you said, um, you're in perfectly good health. Of course I am. Why would I be anything else? He kind of chuckles a bit. Oh, I'm glad to know you're all right, Captain. Um, is there anything else you needed from me? Nope. I just wanted to poke in here and meet my medical officer and ask the questions I did. All right. Well, it's... uh. It's a pl it was a pleasure meeting you, Captain. And as well to you, Doctor. I appreciate your time. And he walks out in a nice military manner. Alrighty. So, uh, before we cut to the bridge, we're actually going to go to engineering. Uh, Moose, uh, let's say you're doing your daily stand-up, uh, because clearly we use scrum here, because we're evil people. Um, and yeah, you're, you're going down the line, you're getting reports from everyone, and it eventually comes to Petty Officer 2nd Class Jensen. Uh, I booted her up from 3rd uh, Class from last session, because I figured 2nd would be better. But in any case, it comes around to uh, Miss Jensen, and she says, uh, Well, sir, I am pleased to report that we have completed the required maintenance uh, for the third time. But I'm pretty confident, sir, that the components we just replaced will be dead within the week. This is because we're using substandard Federation parts. Correct, sir. Uh, we were able to pick up some new ones uh, about a week ago, as you may recall. But I still think that if we want to, if you don't mind me saying so, sir... I still think if we want proper parts, we should actually go to Vulcan or actually go to Tellar and pick it up at the source. Well, I'll make the recommendation to the captain, but for now, let's uh, get a couple of backups made just in case when we have to swap them out. On it, sir. And Moose, I'd like you to roll me a uh, an insight engineering, please. Difficulty one. Inside, do 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 do. Ooh, it's a seven. Do do. No focuses. All right, you get another momentum. So you hear a rattling, 
and you look around and you identify it as a rogue deck plate about five feet to your left and something is causing the the section of deck plate to rattle and otherwise jump out of its sort of holding i'll walk over to it and put my right foot on it, just press down with my right foot okay so as you step on down on it you do feel that it is vibrating uh none of the surrounding deck is vibrating it's just this one section Mr. Anderson, are you around? Uh, he pops out of a yes, uh, Jeffrey tube and he says, Sir! I want you to take a look at this deck plate in here. I want a full write-up on what's causing its issues and a level 3 check on the surrounding deck plating. Uh, very good, and... sir. And uh, just so I have it right, so you have one foot on it at the moment? Just my right foot. All right. Well, the reason it's vibrating becomes immediately apparent because you feel that your entire right leg has gone weightless. You want to look at it for a second? Like, all right. And I'm just going to walk over to the control panel and uh, see if I can kill power for that deck plating. Okay, yeah. This is just going to be a very uh, standard control and engineering Difficulty zero, so more free momentum. Would emergency repairs count for this? Electroplasma systems? Uh, I, I would say EPS would apply, yeah. Okay. Alright, very nice, you're at cap. So, uh, yeah, you cut power to that section of deck plating, and sure enough, the moment you cut power to the... Uh, I, I forget what they're called, the grav plating, uh, the section of the deck stops vibrating. Mr. Anderson also put out a notice to anyone if they hear rattling or have any fluctuations with gravity, they are to immediately report it. Well, do, sir. Jensen, go get fabricating extra parts, and uh, if anything else happens. Yes, sir. And he's going to go to the warp core, and uh, he's going to—he's—he's—he's he's, he's been working on this for the last little little bit, but he's going to finally peel off a sticker on the side of the warp core there that shows a uh, stenciling of Veronica. Okay. Oh my Past God. the warp core. Uh, goes back to doing his work. Shouldn't my parts names get approved by the captain? I'm just saying. I mean, I mean, you would have to put in a requisition for that, right? Y yeah, at least at least an approval chip by the chain of command. Being if you want to name your chair, sure, go ahead. If you want to name your console, go ahead. This is the engineering deck. This is his deck. Oh, sounds an interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, up next, we're gonna cut to the bridge. And yeah, everyone who should be here is here. Uh, so, Morris, you're at the helm. You're basically flying around at about warp two at the moment towards your destination. Uh, Roland, you're at your station. Uh, Shatoli is uh, doing her thing. And there's also Petty Officer Staros at comms. And everything's pretty quiet so far. Uh, you're not detecting really any anomalies. Uh, it's pretty much smooth sailing. And I wanted to give you guys a brief opportunity to roleplay before I did make something appear. Did we fix the phasers? Phase cannon? Uh, yes, I would say by this point, your phase cannons are at peak operating efficiency. Yay, go team. What about our uh, port RCS thrusters? Are those still slightly off balance they are indeed um normally i would have required a task for this but you guys are at cap so um yes they are still a little bit underpowered and unfortunately the only way to fix that is to put in its star dock all right what i've done then to compensate is set a like soft limit on the starboard ones that i can i can but i can blow past that uh, limit or if I need to in a pitch but it, basically now I'm 
I'm weakening the other one so that it flies exactly straight and then have it easily reversed. Gotcha. All right. Well, you know, as you uh, sort of sit and wait, as, you know, we don't see a whole lot in Star Trek, uh, Morris, you and Shatoli at the same time begin to notice there is uh, something along your designated flight path. All right. Um, Given whatever projections for a time to impact would be, I'd like to get a good old scan at that bad boy. Sure. Uh, let's see. Let's do a reason science, uh, difficulty three, and the ship will be assisting with sensor science. I would like to give you a single point of threat. For a, a threat. threat. Okay. We, we have a lot we're of momentum. On momentum. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, we got to keep that. Never mind. <laughs> <I'll> just. <laughs> hey. The, let's not set ourselves up for failure already. Yeah. You you jump on the gun there for giving him threat. Let's let's not make I never figure out how to do this. Uh, okay. And then I think I get a free reroll here because of technical expertise. Mm-hmm. Yes, what do. does the ship do? Uh sensor science from the ship. Very nice. Uh are you rerolling that zero or uh, is the complication range still just 20? Yeah, it's still just 20. Yeah, I'll reroll the zero. We're at max. <laughs> no, we're not. We're Ooh. one down. Yeah, you're at five at the moment. Well, now oh, you're at max. Uh, so With you one do, to spare. You do have one to spare. Uh, so you might want to spend that on asking questions. Uh, but here's right. what you notice. Um, there is a black hole not in your path, but along the way. And it's strange because you're detecting a coaxial signal coming from the black hole. Now, a little bit, you know, nerd science here. Uh, Black holes inherently put off uh, a form of radiation, X-ray radiation. At least I think that's how it works. Um, And it's not uncommon for it to have a signal. However, the signature that you're detecting suggests something of a massive power scale, something that a black hole would not normally put off. Hmm. Um, I'm actually Googling coaxial. Um, Interesting. And so I think my navigator role that we came up with gives me a free question, and then I can use our bonus one task another. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right. Um... I'm open to suggestions. Um, I would ask first one. if... Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, if you got one, go ahead and I'll, I'll assist you with the next one. Is the um, is this black hole either in transit or is it changing in size? Uh, no. I don't know is... if that's two questions or not. I'll, I'll make it one. It is maintaining the same size. The event horizon is neither moving nor is it uh, expanding or contracting. Okay. Um, Captain, we, I'm. Uh, there is a singularity in our path emitting strange signals. Uh, Ensign Chitoli, are you seeing this as well? I am indeed. And I think for sake of argument, if uh, uh, either uh, Moose or uh, Rollins, if they're not Rollins... Um, for Eliza, if either of you want to play Shatoli, since uh, you don't have a bridge personnel, you certainly may. Oh, Isn't Staros uh, your guy? Yeah. yeah. Staros is mine. Okay. okay. Yes, uh, well, she I... is detecting it. All right. Um, and then I guess I want to know more about the coaxial signal. Is there evidence of a communication or... Maybe a clue to its power source. I, I want to investigate that signal. All right. Well, you've said two very important words, power source, so I can give you this next bit of information. Um, the reason there is a signal coming from this black hole is because there is a, shall we say, a warp core-like 
uh, energy signature. And by that I mean it is several orders of magnitudes uh, higher than, say, a f normal fusion reaction or other conventional reactions. Like the power output is phenomenal. It's probably even two to three times what you're putting out. Feature. Hmm. We could ask more questions. You could. It would cost actual momentum, though. Uh, Chitoli's in on this. Whoever's playing Chitoli, do you have any questions? Um. Let's see. Uh. Nothing that I can really think of, no. Um. Is there any. I was going to say, is there. Is it a recognizable pattern, like a, any kind of digital or... I mean, it, it's a pot energy signature. Could it, could, could it be a communication type energy? I will say I will answer that if you give me a momentum. Uh, yeah, I was curious about that. I'll... I'll... Alright. I, I like it. So by spending the momentum for the question, I will answer truthfully and say it is similar to that of a cycle. Uh, we'll say, for sake of argument, that every single warp core, uh, even your own, goes through a cycle where it kind of peaks and then it wanes and then it peaks and then it wanes. Something like that. So it is a artificial uh, cycle, but it does not appear to be something that would suggest a distress call or uh, any form of communication. But it's a repeating pattern? Correct. Okay. Okay. So who's who's our sciency person right now? Well, I believe it's I a it's a toss up between Morris and Chitoli. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna say she's more analysis than I am. Well, then I would uh, Ensign Chitoli. Would a probe be more effective scanning this? Uh, than we are at this range. Um, it could give us some more insight, Captain. I think it's worth a try. Let's go ahead and uh, how? So, how long would it take a probe to reach at a to get us a better resolution? Uh, I would say that uh, if you maintain your current speed, you'll actually be there in about thirty minutes. Uh, if you launch a probe ahead of yourself, I could be wrong, but I actually don't think. Uh, probes of this era can go above warp one. I could be wrong, no. but that sounds about right. Okay, I would. So what I would do is I would probably come out of. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, Ensign Morris, let's go ahead and drop out of warp about uh, five minutes out from our uh, five minutes out from that anomaly. Let's go ahead and launch a probe and get a better scan before we enter this. So we get a better idea of what's going on before we bring our ship towards a black hole with an undisclosed energy signature. Understood, Captain. I'll begin plotting a course now to maximize the effectiveness of our probe as well as ensuring the safety of the Avenger. And then Chitoli's our comms officer, right? Or is it Staros? Staros, Staros is your comms. Hey. Mr. Staros, let's inform Starfleet with our current situation and ask it for any extra guidance or if they want us to come back to this. Very well. And he'll send off a message. At the same time, he's also going to record any communications that this black hole's sending out. Okay. All right. Well, uh, of course, the response is not immediate, but we'll say for sake of argument, uh, Morris, you... <clears throat> Park the Avenger at uh, your desired distance away, and uh, one of you fires off a probe towards the uh, the black hole, and about, uh, we'll say about 15 minutes of waiting later, uh, you are getting a signal back from the probe. It has arrived and is able to transmit a visual. Okay, uh, I do want to be like in an orbit around the black hole rather than stationary, just so we have some escape velocity if we need it. Okay. Oh, if we're five minutes out of light speed, we should be... A good distance away orbiting would take forever wouldn't it yeah it would it would be a while so you're you're still like five minutes out at warp two so oh okay 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 so yeah that's... when we i do have that that course then 
when we arrive, we'll go into an orbit. Okay. All right, yeah. Case, bring up the visual of the probe, please. Ah, right. uh, yes. Do I need to make another task? Yeah, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so when you put it on screen, uh, obviously the only way you can actually see a black hole is either because it is a void uh, from which no light escapes, so you kind of see like a, a swirl in the surrounding space, the stars behind it, as the gravity sort of forms a lens effect. Um, but you're also seeing some form of a secretion disk, like maybe from a, a passing star or a passing planet. So there is a somewhat of a debris field uh, surrounding and falling into the black hole. However, uh, what's immediately apparent and what you would all notice, even if you're not of a scientific bent, is that there is one particular rock that is maintaining perfect distance away from the event horizon. And by that I mean it is not moving towards the horizon or away from it. It is station keeping, which should not be possible. Mm. Hmm. Attempt, let's go ahead and attempt to send some kind of communication through the probe to that asteroid using standard language and database. And Starus will do just that. All right. So, you know, you send off uh, standard greetings, standard hails, and nothing comes back. Hmm. Just sit there and wait for a moment, and then slowly turn and look at the captain like, no response. Very well. Can we determine if this the, uh, asteroid is made of natural material i mean like is it a standard rock or is it a rock covering some kind of metallic inner core i will say you will have to actually do a task um but it will be a difficulty to uh we'll say a reason science and uh, you're going through the probe to scan it so the ship is still assisting with sensor science okay uh what's my difficulty two All right. Um, we'll probably just earn the momentum back, but do y'all want me to not spend any? No, spend one. I feel like the no, first one's basically free. Wait, oh, yeah, that was one die. Um, that's a good one though. So I'll roll it's a good one. two for real now. Okay. All right. We'll, uh, we'll take, uh, let's see. So yeah, you guys will get that momentum right back. Um, so yeah, Morris, uh, you're able to tell that, uh, this is a metallic asteroid. It's some form of a hybrid between uh, nickel and copper. Uh, but what you really notice is not so much the composition as the fact that there appear to be geometric shapes, uh, on the surface of the planet and even stranger, uh, despite any indication as to how, uh, there's a Class M atmosphere there as well. Um, on or in? Uh, on. I'm I'm piping all of this data. Um, you know, par paraphrasing it as as you just told us. Um, and then I get one free question. Uh, is this asteroid interacting with the signal in any way? Like that coaxial one? It is the source of the signal. Ah. Uh, there's the source of our signal, Captain. It couldn't be more clear. Um, I just don't know why or how. Interesting. Hmm. How far, I mean, how, f how far is the asteroid out of the black hole? I mean, is, if we were to approach it, are we going to be effect are we doing, going to be too close for the gravity well i would say that it is somewhere between 5 and 6 au so cosmically mm -hmm. it's pretty close but you have quite a bit of distance to work with okay so the sur surface is class m can we get the probe cl closer to get some kind of visuals on the surface you could and it I would say if you give me a momentum, we'll just say that you move it, and I can give you more data. 
Captain said no. so. Yep, I'm down with that. So let's go ahead and pull that momentum. All right. So uh, the probe closes in, and the screen begins to show you that, sure enough, there are uh, geometric shapes on the surface. And by that, I mean it's not just like square buildings or uh, triangle buildings. I'm talking things like stars, uh, spheres. It's all very strange. Uh, all the shapes appear to be more or less flawless from what you're seeing. And, I mean, you, you still could probably make the leap of logic that they're actually buildings, but there's definitely some form of intelligent construction here. I have a question. All right. Um, the, the coaxial symbol or signal uh, implies that it's directional. Is it going from this asteroid toward the black hole? If you give me another momentum, I will answer that question. Yeah, I think that's important. What direction is that signal? Uh, so it is, you're partially correct. Uh, it is not going just to the black hole, though. Uh, it's almost like a an actual line that comes that goes through this, this uh, ball of rock into the black hole, but there's also a line that projects out from the black hole. So it's... It's a parallel, or it is the same line, if that makes any sense. It's making a vector in two different directions from itself. Thank you. I was trying to remember what but the word the, was. It's the same vector. Okay. Huh. Hmm. Have any other star sh Starfleet ships been in this area that they should have observed this before? Nope. Okay. Um, um, I have a question. Do we know... If in the initials, have we won a scan of the asteroid itself to know if there's life signs on board that planet yet? Or the asteroid? My bad. I would say if you gave me a momentum, I can answer if there are life signs. Yeah, I'm going to spend that momentum. Okay. I don't I don't think we've ever used this much momentum on obtain information, but I love it. I know, it's great. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so the answer is, is there at first, you know, you're, you're looking at the probe readout and it seems pretty clear that there's no life, but you know, you blink and you look at the data again and you almost swear that, you know, there's, there's hints of life, like maybe someone's in stasis or, you know, maybe the life signs are just that faint, but then you blink again and it's gone again. So what you make of that is up to you. Alright, um, Captain, there seems to be... Oh, yes. Uh, Captain, there seems to be... I'm not sure how correct this is, but there seems like there might be some sort of life signs on board the asteroid. Interesting. Here's, here's what I want to do. Let's go ahead and move the probe. I think we're pretty much done with the information we're going to get for the probe. I want to bring the probe into a very tight orbit and see if it gets locked on by any kind of uh, any kind of weapons or systems like that before we approach it with the ship. Hi, right. sir. So you do that. You have the probe go into a tight orbit of this uh, object and nothing happens to the probe. I, I think I have another question. Um... <clears throat> Given given this the vector of this you know signal, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna pull up my star charts and I don't care how far away they are, but does this signal intersect with any other celestial bodies that we've mapped? Uh, that have been mapped, no. But law of averages and how big space is, you know, you go in a direction long enough, you'll hit something. Okay, but there's not like an obvious when I pull up the map, uh, like. 40,000 40, light years away, it hits this thing we know about. Yeah, like, there, there's nothing in the vector's path that would suggest that it's specifically aimed at something. Other than the black hole. Other than the black hole, yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'm done for now. I think, I think it's time to move in and check this out. Mr. Morse, let's go ahead and kick the engines up, and head in towards this asteroid. I'll spin around to my chair, and I'll say, uh, I, sir, uh, however, I request we coordinate with whoever is replacing me on this position so that we have a, 
rescue attempt planned in case we cannot uh, escape the singularity with the shuttle. Well, I was saying bring this whole ship in. Oh. Um. Do you have a problem no. with my order, sir? No, I had a... I made an assumption, but if you... I don't know what if there's a protocol against it, but uh, I will do what the captain asks if there's not one. Okay, yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's one of those phrasing things where, you know, it could have been interpreted several ways, and... I decided to let you guys work that out in role play. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Morris, you bring the Avenger uh, up close to the asteroid. And uh, about how far away would you say you park the Avenger? Uh, I, I do st standard orbit altitude based on the size of the planet. Well, size, size of the object. Uh, I might have forgotten to mention it, but it is about a kilometer sized chunk of rock. Oh, that's it. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, we never we could, we had all these questions and never said. By the way, how big is it? <laughs> uh, how how far away do we need to be to be in a synchronous orbit around the black hole? Uh, basically, kind of with like not not exactly with the asteroid, but parallel to it, so that we're not in the signal. Um. I could I would say that you could get fairly close. Um I just need to know like mechanics wise, are you gonna be at close range, medium range, long range, extreme range, that sort of thing. Well, Transporters so are close range, right? Correct. Yeah. Close range. Okay. I don't know if we want to transport right next to a black hole. You're my science guy, so you tell me. No, no, I'm I'm the shooty guy. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I'm talking about Morris, Ensign Morris. Would it um, be safe to transport at this distance from Black Hole? I'm just thinking about it, but I look over at Shatoli. Um, well, out of character, would it be? <laughs> I don't I, really know. I would say that uh, as long as you're not getting interference from you know, the, the signal, it should be okay, but, and I might be misremembering, I think I said that your transporters had some kind of fault in them uh, last session. So oh. that fault may have been worked out by now, but you haven't actually tried transporting anyone living through it yet. <laughs> um, it might Find contain a some sort of risk. risk. <laughs> do, do we still have the breach on computers, by the way? You do indeed. What? Right. Oh boy. Uh, I <clears throat> suck. Well, if there's a concern, let's just take a shuttle. Let's take a shuttle pod. I think that's our best option. Yeah, let's 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 not concern let's not concern ourselves with minute details at this point. Let's go ahead and take a shuttle pod. Okay. We have no idea what's going on, so I do want the doctor with me. Okay. I want my security Alrighty. with me. And uh, yeah, let's do this up. All right. So let's uh, let's use this map to prepare for the away mission. So, Captain, you're going. Oh yes. Right. This is this is pre TNG touchy feely. Captain must stay behind. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the doc's coming. Uh, Rollins is coming. Uh, who else is coming? Uh, let's see. Because uh, I think we just need either Moose or Morris, and if not them, then a supporting character they control. No, I want my engineer with me, because if okay. this is a strange technology, I totally want my engineer with me. That's four of us, and... So, all oh, we got left... What Morris player is not the shuttle. Yeah, I, I assume Morris is piloting the shuttle. Okay, then that's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, you can, or, like, I have three con as well. No, no, he can fly, he can fly. We're good. <laughs> All right. He can fly, he can All right. fly. That is good, though, because my supporting character is a tractor beam specialist, so that could, maybe, if we need help there. Uh oh. Yeah, it could come in handy. All right, so uh, I also need to know uh, if you guys are spending any momentum or giving me threat for any additional equipment. Um, do med kits have a cost? Like the full, the Not full on for ones? you, because you're the CMO. They, 
it does not cost anything for you to bring a full med kit. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, phasers. Uh, by default, Standard. you would have, um, I believe, phase pistols is what right. they should be. Let me quickly pull up the uh, the rules on that since the... we're waiting on Moose anyway. They're the only ones, unless except for the rifle. Right. There's not like a type. All right, now I'm back. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, let's... Can we bring explosives? You know, let's... I mean, if you want to bring <laughs> explosives. I don't think we really need them. We got through momentum. I mean, I what better safe than sorry. Okay, I found the chart. Uh, so a phase pistol does not cost anything. So you, you all could come with a phase pistol. And the only difference between a phase pistol and a phaser type 2 is that you do not have the charge quality on the phase pistol. Uh, <clears throat> what's the cost of a, a pulse rifle? A pulse rifle? Uh, there is a particle rifle, if that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say, let's see, it says standard issue, um, but it is a challenge dice of four. I'm going to say that it costs one momentum and one threat. I, I don't think we'll need one. I mean... From the security assessment, as long as we're all with hand phasers, we haven't detected any threat. Do pattern enhancers, do they exist yet? I believe they do. Let's double check. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. It's not something the book mentions. Either uh, way. Pattern enhancers. Uh, used to boost, blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, so it would cost a momentum to bring a pattern enhancer uh, collection with you. Now, the caveat to pattern enhancers is that uh, each uh, trio of devices can um, basically allow for two transports. They were not a thing for Enterprise Era. Okay, yeah, then in that case, no pattern enhancers. Sorry. That's fair. Well, what about uh, the... Oh, it was... The UT tactical headset that lets you get some scanning as a heads-up display. Um, I would say that that would just be a uh, some form of a tricorder that you could just take a standard issue. Okay, I'll do that. But do we want to bring a UT with us for one opportunity? Um, I think that might be something we need. Yeah. I'll agree with that. Okay. All right. Who's grab? Who has that? U T. Uh, Universal, Universal translator. translator. Ah. Yeah, especially if this could be a first contact situation, yeah. or it could be a first shoot situation. It'll be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so those explosives. I don't think we'll need explosives. So the other uh, important bit of equipment I need to know, are, is anyone bringing an EV suit? I think, well, it's a it was a Class M atmosphere in the scans, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so something that's called a black hole that could the atmosphere away. Yeah, I think we should probably bring those just in case. Would All right. So see standard know. issue in the pod, though? Uh, no, so EV suits oh, okay. are a two momentum cost. But that's okay. for the whole party, right? Yes, that's for the whole party. I was going to say, no. uh, we have three momentum. gets one, the rest <laughs> of you <is screwed. laughs> The only other thing I could think of is, like, the portable battery pack, in case we need to, like, recharge some of the power on the rock. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, portable power is just one. Okay, so that would be the rest of our momentum if we do the EV suits and the power pack. Sounds good to me. Okay, I'm down with it. All right. So uh, you gather your equipment. Together. Uh, you gather your equipment. Uh, you get everything uh, on to the shuttle pod, and you depart. And we'll just put the us shuttle very... pod. Are we leaving on? Uh, that's a good question. Which one are you leaving on? Um, which one's? In better shape right now. 
I was well, like, fix one? Um, Moose's people have gone over the one that had failed and replaced the components. Um, so it's just a matter of whether you want to take the dash one or the dash two. Dash two hasn't been cleared yet, mm, though. I was inspection. about to say we want the one that we know works. Yeah, I'll take dash one. Okay. All right. So uh, you uh, fly out of the shuttle bay or drop out. I forget which it is. Either way. Uh, you begin making your way towards this ball of rock, and uh, Morris, if you remember, I did say that there was a debris field around the, the black hole, so there is going to be a little bit of a navigation check here. Um, it's going to be a control or a daring plus con, and the shuttle pod will assist you with a either a engines or a computers plus con. I'm going to have it assist me with computers, and I'll use control. All right, makes sense. Um, is this the actual flying or the charting a course? Uh, this yeah. is actual flying. Uh, um, the difficulty here will be a two. I'll roll for the shuttle pod. All right. All right. Very nice. That's one success already. Pretty good for a shuttle pod. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one success for Morris. That's all you need. Um, we were uh, assisted by the computers, though. And you so were. I'd like to use technical expertise to re-roll my zero. Okay. Very well. Hey. So uh, uh, you actually get one momentum from this. And yeah, uh, you know, you have no problem between your own innate flying skills and the computer helping you. You're able to get uh, down towards this uh, ball of rock without any issue. Uh, now, my question is, um, where would you like to set her down? So if you if you want to imagine um, there is at the center of this uh, sort of buildings, there is a large uh, rectangular prism. And then out from radiating out from that are smaller buildings of varying shapes. So would you like to set on the outskirts? Would you like to set near this large building, where would you like to go? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, I feel like the outskirts will probably be a safer bet, at least in my opinion. My thought is that um, landing in the, the big middle is more likely to breach like a prime directive issue than the outskirts. Yeah. Um, now that we're closer, can I, uh, does the shuttle pod have sensors where I could, like, scan to see if those life signs are any stronger? It does, uh, but it doesn't have great sensors, because it's just a shuttle pod. Right. Can I um, attempt the task anyways? Oh, yeah, you certainly <laughs> can. Uh, this would be a reason medicine, and the shuttle pod will assist you with, we'll say, a sensor science for the shuttle pod. Uh, I'm going to spend okay. two thread here, and I'm going to make the difficulty a four. Okay. Mm. Um, I don't want to spend his point of determination this early. So let's see. I'll uh, I'll take that momentum we just got to get a third die. All right. Um. Hmm. Actually, no, this is probably something he'd use it for. Um, I might, with this value apply for determination, uh, something new is something exciting. Yeah, that would definitely apply. Yeah, I'll use my point of determination then for that. Okay, so you're spending it for the two free successes? Correct. All right, in that case, uh, you would have to also give me a threat for that third die. Sure, I'll do that. All right. do not have an applicable focus. Very nice. So that's five successes already. Uh, I just need to see sensor science from the shuttle pod. Does anyone get it? I can get it. Oh, sure. Go for it. Wires. Okay, so no help from the ship, but hey, you get that momentum back. Alrighty. Uh, but yeah, for Liza, uh, you're getting a bit of a stronger reading on that potential life sign. Um, it is coming mm -hmm. from the largest building. 
Is it multiple life signs or just one? Just one. And it's still exhibiting that sort of phasing in and out. It's weak. Uh, it's it's sort of it's almost like the signal. It is waxing and waning. Right. Um. Hmm. I'm going to use that momentum I just got to ask a question for obtain information. Sure. Um, is it possible to tell if this life si sign signal is like out of phase or is it just simply doing that waxing in and out? That I makes will any say sense. if you also give me a point of threat, I will tell you something very important. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you the threat. Okay. I was going to say, you sell it like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what you realize uh, for Liza is the waxing and waning of the life sign perfectly correlates to that of the energy signature. Hmm. Uh, Captain, I'm detecting only one life sign at the larger rectangular uh, seemed like a prism we saw earlier and if my instincts are correct, it's the source of that signal, possibly. Mm. Okay. If you're only detecting one life sign, let's go ahead and approach that particular building with caution. Let's uh, see if we can figure out what's going on with this being either assist or not assist based on what's going on. Okay. So, uh, just so I have it right, uh, are you still settling down on the outskirts or are you going to settle closer to this building? Let's settle closer to the building if we only have one life detection. Alrighty. Give me one moment to uh, set up the map and as I'm doing so, um, you know, you bring her down, you, you set the shuttle pod down and it's Actually, rather uh, smooth landing. Uh, no complaints uh, from anyone involved. Uh, I will say that uh, you make a, a check to make sure, once again, that the atmosphere is breathable, and sure enough, it is. So you pop open the hatch, and sure enough, breathable air out there. Uh, I will say there is a faint scent uh, that is detectable. Um, I would say that this is something like uh, almost a lavender-type smell. Um, and you are seeing, uh, close by, you are seeing the following building. And uh, you Ooh. guys are over to the right, and I do have dynamic yeah. lighting on. Oh, fun. So, because dynamic lighting doesn't show you everything, um, these sort of entranceways that you're seeing sort of slots that go into the building... Um, those mm -hmm. are, of course, open, and you can basically go one at a time through them. Uh, but the building itself uh, resembles if someone were to lay down a concrete, uh, just flat concrete uh, to form a building. Uh, but it's not concrete, it's some other alloy or metal. Um, but in general, uh, what you're able to see inside the building is that there is a strange glowing uh, green column uh, that you could just make out from beyond the walls that uh, sort of limit how much or how fast you can get into this place. Hmm. Limit how far or how fast? Like, for example, if uh, this entire front area was just open, you could probably mm -hmm. fly the shuttle in there. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Well... Sounds like my uh, security team gets to earn their money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's go ahead and... I'm going to send uh, Lieutenant Rollins. Go ahead and uh, take, a, take a look inside the building. And we'll approach slowly. All right, so go ahead and arrange yourselves where you'd like to be. As Rollins moves up, Moose is going to follow behind him. Um, and I'm going to place myself behind Moose. Okay. So I have the, that heads up tactical display, whatever that does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, it, it, all, it, it acts like a tricorder. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, uh, Rollins, since you're up first, I'd like you to roll me a Insight and Security uh, Difficulty 3 for reasons that may become apparent. Oddly, uh, can I assist him? How would you Maybe? be assisting him? I guess, like, um... Maybe either A, uh, making tricorder scans as we go along, or possibly looking into areas that he might not be. Sure, I'll let it happen. Cool. And then survival actually... Survival or athletics? Survival would definitely apply here. Okay. Um, since I'm assisting him, my one of my, uh, my species talent will actually come into effect. Mm-hmm. So whenever a Ryzen assists another character using Insider Reason, they can re-roll a single d20 in their dice pool. And if they succeed, uh, they gain one bonus momentum. Very nice. Let's see here. So, What was the difficulty in three? Difficulty is three. Um, so I bold security if we want to give him a threat to <laughs> get another die. Um, well, with my species talent, you can re-roll any failure. Well, a single d- failure if you have one. So if you get a success and then... Uh, and also I'm assisting you, but I'll leave that up to you. I, from the situation he's describing so far, I try to refrain from giving him threat right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got. I think that might come to bite us, depending on how this unfolds. So inside security, I need three. You're assisting, so if you get one, that'll be. And I do have one. So I just good. realized I forgot to use my untapped potential a couple times. Womp womp. We'll just have like... to remember going forward. Um, so oh, yeah. we were tapping that potential. Uh, Rollins and uh, Feliza, uh, you guys, so you guys can move in further. Um, as you move in, you kind of take stock of what you're seeing and uh, sort of on the outskirts of this room, I'll start on the outside and move in. Uh, so on the outskirts, there is a form of metal grating and metal catwalk. So there's two floors or ish uh, in this place and there are ladders up to these catwalks. Uh, in general, you're seeing that uh, they look like boxes on the map, but they are actually like metal crates. Um, they appear to be sealed. Uh, none of them appear to be empty. Um, but now that you're closer in, uh, you are able to better see this glowing green column. And it almost resembles, um, well, for sake of sake of uh, imagining it, uh, it's like a TNG-style warp core. Uh, in that it is a singular column that has sort of cascading green lights that go from top to bottom. And it is uh, connected with the ceiling and the floor, so it goes throughout the entire building. Uh, The column itself is opaque, Uh, it is glowing green, and you also notice that there appear to be two uh, form of wiring or conduits that trail off the pod and into the quote-unquote, northern side of the building. Hmm. Can we get a better reading as to the energy that is being emanated off this core? Uh, You can indeed, but you would have to move a little bit closer inside. That's okay. We didn't... Nothing triggered us security-wise. Nope. You haven't noticed anything amiss. Hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and move the group up. Especially seeing that I can't see this wonderful map right now. I was going to say, yeah, move up to uh, where you feel would be appropriate. All right. Oop. Put myself there. Okay. So, uh, with you guys in here, uh, the one thing I forgot to mention is that there is a uh, sort of a readout uh, on the side of this column. Uh, it is in a language that you aren't able to translate right away, even with the Universal Translator. Hmm. Okay. I was like the poke around but i'd like to go around the column okay so kind of 
down this way, not across the wires. Okay. So you're checking it out. You're uh, getting a feel for where these crates are stacked, where they're not stacked, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and actually, if I can peek around, like right there, just to look for the blind spot or anything. No, it's good. Because uh, what you notice is hidden behind um, this column here to uh, your immediate left, um, you notice that in the back, sort of down this direction towards the east of the map, uh, there appears to be some form of a... It's, it's very strange. Like, everything here is either concrete or metal, but you swear that you're seeing actual wood, uh, wood floors uh, in this area over here to the east. It's oddity over here. Let everyone know. Um, hmm. Hmm. Uh, someone maybe wants to keep an eye out over there, but yeah, we'll want to finish surveying yeah, the room. I'll I'll check out that thing. Well, we might wait. Let us look around the room, make sure everything looks secure at the moment. Oh, uh, I want to run a quick scan of that column thing just to make sure that it's not, I guess, like the life form. Because we're in the building now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this, I want this... to... Uh, wanna... Roll me a reason medicine... Uh, difficulty two. Okay. Um, from the looks of it, xenobiology probably won't apply here. I'll give it to you. Why not? Okay. All right. Hey, you get a momentum. Uh, yeah, that life sign, it's coming from the column. <laughs> um, everyone... It appears that this, well, whatever it is, this is the life sign. Mm. Fascinating. Is there saying, any kind of computer ahead. consoles or anything like that to interface with beyond the, the display on this pillar? Uh, no, you're not seeing any yet, but uh, Moose, when you uh, peek up there to the north... Uh, you do see that the wires uh, trail off into another sort of wood-floored room, and you're just making out what might be a console back there. Hmm. Might have found something. I'll be back. And, uh, take his way on down. Okay. Don't let him go by himself. Yeah. <laughs> this is how you lose people. Where'd he go? I don't know. I didn't see... <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the, the wires, as you can see, uh, they lead to a, uh, a console of some sort. It, I would say it's more TOS era than Ent era. Um, so, again, you're seeing the same strange alien symbols that the Universal Translator is. It's struggling, like, it, it's trying to, it's, it's doing its best, basically. Uh, but you, you don't have a translation yet, but you're seeing readouts that range from what probably are some form of signal distribution to uh, power output. There's lots of dials. There's lots of gauges. Um, but the console is active. I'm just going to link the UT right to the ship. Okay. And so that's the roast can see it in real time. Okay. Hmm. And uh, he can work with the computer uh, okay. to try and crack it faster. Okay. Uh, why don't we have Staros do me a control and science? And the Avenger will assist with a computers and let's do con. Uh, Xenolinguistics. I can't say that now. I know what you're saying. Yes, that is one. Uh, cryptology translation. Okay, cool. Who wants to roll for the ship? Yeah, someone uh, wants to uh, grab the ship. I can I'll do it. Oh, okay. Oh, you you got got it. It. Go ahead. No, I've already rolled enough. You can go ahead. All right. Uh, what was computers? Uh, I'm actually going to change it. It's going to be communications and science. Comms science. Okay. Wow. So I can say that uh, this can either succeed at cost or you just don't have enough successes. It's up to you guys. Um, 
probably want to know what that says. So I'd say succeed at cost, but majority wins. No, Captain agrees. Succeed, I'm pushing succeed buttons. Whatever. Cost. <laughs> whatever happens, I'm pushing buttons. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, I, there will be a complication. Uh, so Moose, you begin to sort of get a feedback from Staros about, you know, hey, push this button maybe, don't push that one. And you maybe go to push a button that you think means uh, sort of a status report. And when you push that button, uh, immediately uh, back on the ship, uh, the Avenger rocks. And uh, Staros reports, uh, Sir, uh, a tractor beam just locked onto the Avenger. Do we know the source of it? Uh, where on the asteroid? I mean, where on the asteroid it emanated? Uh, yes, it's it's coming from the the place where you are right now, sir. Okay. I push the same button again to see what happens. So uh, I guess you could kind of hear the Avenger shakes even more violently, and Staro says, uh, "Sir, whatever you just did, uh, yeah, it it made the tractor beam even stronger." Push, push the button on the other side. Maybe that's the minus. <laughs> Do I see uh, anything that says uh, it could be like a depower, power down, turn off? Uh, no. The only thing that would resemble that, and again, you did succeed, so you have a partial translation. The only thing that might work is an actual lever. And you have no idea if that lever, if you pull it, if it will do what you're hoping. You know what? Mm. I'm going to start uh, trying to program the computer. Um, Perhaps the, uh, the emitter. I'm just going to program the computer to start initiate power down of everything, except for critical components. Okay. Uh, I guess my question would be, uh, how are you going to do that uh, without knowledge of the... Uh, system that's involved like if you can give me a good pitch i'll allow it but i need to I'm know how would you even start programming it i'm gonna piggyback my tri uh, my tricorder through the ut and that's making uh, that's going to be uh, patched into the console mm -hmm. and it's going to start translating the program code into whatever it would accept as its own code trial and error just try and get to go into a shutdown state like i'm not trying to give a complex algorithm but i'm just trying to get it to like shut down non-critical Okay. Uh, I would say, because this is alien technology, uh, normally this would be a difficulty 5 task, but since you guys did bring a universal translator, that's going to be knocked down to a 4. Um, this is going to be a control and engineering, and I would say that I'm going to spend some threat. I'm going to make the complication range a 16 to 20 on this one. I'm going to burn my determination for two auto successes. All right. What value are you tapping? Uh, let's see. No one messes with my family or my ship. Nah. Uh, to, bold, to boldly go where no man has gone before, because I'm trying to do something new. Uh, yeah, I'll let forth. that one happen. All right. Can I assist at all? or? Uh, if you could tell me how you're assisting. I mean, I can, in the same way with the... Transcoder, just kind of giving him feedback on what seems to be working or what not working. Uh, let me ask this. What is your engineering score? Three. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you assist then. And it was control engineering again? Correct. And I have experimental computer technology. I'll let it apply, sure. And here's the two. <laughs> hey, there's the four successes you need. Let's see what Rollins, if Rollins gets you uh, any momentum. Uh, control engineering, is that what you said? Yep. Actually, looking at it, because I made the complication range a 16 to 20, uh, that is a complication. Oh, no. Yeah. Wait, mm. do, you, do you have technical expertise? Uh, let me take a look at what I have. Oh, you weren't assisted by a computer. Yeah, he wasn't assisted right. by the computer. I do have computer expertise. I'm pretty sure that's for the ship's computer. I could be wrong. 
If it's technical expertise, it's when you're assisted by sensors or computers. Uh, whenever you attempt a task that involves programming or study of a computer system, you may add. Oh, I may add a bonus. Okay. All right. Well, roll another one if you if you'd like. Okay. So you uh, you get two momentum. You're up to four. Uh, but the complication is, as you're programming all of this, uh, the rest of you, uh, Morris, uh, Captain, for Lizza, is this where you want to be at the moment? I'm where I am. Uh, mm, mm. Um, I mean, I would be, I'd be honest with you, I'd probably be someplace wherever the display was trying to look at it. I ain't gonna... Okay, then uh, you would be... I'd probably be... Be over here. Oh, sorry. I'll let you. Oop. Turner, are we allowed to give you momentum to get rid of complications? I can't remember. You can, but for this particular instance, I would not accept them. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I'd probably be pretty close to this thing. Just in case a life form would pop out, I'd probably be, like, there. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I wanted to have a sight on both parties, so I've moved myself just to around the crate. All right. Then the complication is uh, from out of seemingly nowhere, almost out of thin air, uh, Morris, a creature, a humanoid creature, uh, drops down and tries to attack you. And at the same time, so does one with for Lizza. Um, oh, great. So before I do the rolls for them, uh, these creatures are... Um, if you know what a Nosferatu looks like, they are twisted humanoid abominations, uh, very ugly looking, uh, very grotesque, um, they have sort of hunched backs, they have very pale green skin, they're just generally not fun to look at. Um, but let me actually roll for these, and let's see what happens. Um, so Morris, let's start with you, I need you to roll me a Daring Security, and it is opposed... So wow. Can I yeah. use oh. can I use momentum on my roll? Oh yeah, you certainly can. Uh you need to roll at least four successes here. Ah. Um Oh wow. If it's four successes, then I don't think. Hmm. Looking at determination now. We're only as strong as our weakest link. I mean, if you want to be the weakest link. <laughs> no, I don't want to be. That's why. <laughs> that's 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 my motivation not to be the weakest link. Uh, all right, I think I might use that for two. And then it's going to be two more momentum to get a fourth die. Mm -hmm. um, for Liza, you've already used your determination. Correct. All right, I'm going to leave that momentum there for you. Uh, All right. So I'll I'll roll two dice, but I've already got two successes. All right. And there's no collaboration that I can offer. <laughs> no. All right. Yeah. Not enough. So Morris, what happens to you is this creature, whatever it is, uh, it quite literally falls onto you and knocks you down to the ground. Uh, you're going to take two stress worth of damage. But it's also important to note that you are currently prone on the ground. And uh, next, we'll do the doctor. Uh, so, doctor, yeah. uh, your number to beat. You only have to get one six su or two successes. Okay. Um. I think. Ugh, I'm trying to think here. Yeah, I think I'm going to burn three of that momentum to roll four dice because my daring security is hot garbage. Okay. Alright. So daring security. Because my daring security is all of a ten, so this will be fun. Hey, you got the two you needed, which means you actually get a momentum back. Uh, so for Liza, hey. uh, you are just, you know, conscious enough of your surroundings that uh, maybe you hear this creature dropping from the ceiling. And yeah, you mm -hmm. sidestep out of the way just in time. Um, cool. But it is at this point that we are going to go into initiative order. 
So let me add turn to everyone here. And then I'm just going to give the uh, the enemy combatants a single turn rather than tracking them all individually. Um, so that is uh, that happens all at once. And I will say it is your go, the player's go. Any of you can act. And I would say that at the moment, uh, Rollins and Captain, uh, only you two realize that Morris has been attacked by something. You have no idea that the Doctor's also in peril. Okay. Right. How much ground can we cover in one move? Uh, I would say you could cover up to a medium distance, so let's say 30 feet. All right. So I've I've the quick to action and collaboration too. So, uh, am I still need the console? Does the console look like it still needs my attention? That's that's a judgment call you yourself have to make. Uh, does right. it does it appear that these aliens have uh, weapons on them? No, they are just clawing at you with these sort of long, disgusting fingernails. Um. It's, now that's a minor action to move 30 feet, or is it a other action to move further? Uh, it is a minor action to move the 30, um, and then you would have your normal action, which you could also turn into movement. Or right. you could spend, I believe it's one momentum for a additional minor action. Uh, if you use your action to sprint, you can actually gain us a bunch of momentum. I, mean, I will... I I can go forward and shoot him. I mean... And, and Moose doesn't know yet that there's someone under attack. Right. But I don't see... I thought you said we all see Morris getting attacked. No, no the captain only Rollins and, Rollins. And, and Voss see it. Uh, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't mind getting up and defending myself. Okay. So, uh... Hi, dogs. Um, oh, did you hear be, them? It would be a uh, a minor action for Morris to stand up, but then you could conceivably do an actual action. All right, it would also be an action to draw a weapon, so I'm not going to do that just yet. Um, well, you could I'm spend gonna... one momentum for an extra minor action and pull out your phase pistol. Um, let me see here. Uh, I'm good at shooting things. <laughs> I think no I'm not going to do that because okay. I think there's a, a penalty for shooting in close range right? or it increases your complication range it increases your complication range yes All right, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to stand up and take a guard action Okay. Um, the difficulty zero task so I want to get us a bunch of momentum here and also be more difficult to hit okay uh, so... Let's see, what does it say for guard? Of course, it doesn't tell you what the, the task is. Uh, let's say this is a... Uh, let's make it a daring or a control plus security. Uh, for fun, I'm going to make it daring, although it doesn't actually matter. All right. Can I collaborate? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez. And, and listen. Uh, I'm going to take threat for that uh, rather than the complication. So good news. You do guard yourself. And all attacks made against you uh, until your next turn, I believe, uh, are at a increased difficulty. Uh, but it is now going to be the... Uh, quick to action? Oh, you can quick to action. Go ahead. Um, So uh, this is my first time firing a phase pistol not in the simulator um mm -hmm. no i mean like <laughs> uh so is there a range that i need to worry about uh i believe it is a medium range uh so you could conceivably fire from where you are it would just be a difficulty three but if you were to move up and then fire it would just be a difficulty two okay um can i do that yeah you certainly can do that do you have any talents that give you extra benefits for aiming Nope. Uh, I do not. All right. So, uh, firing your phase pistol, it will be a control and security. The difficulty is a two. 
Uh, can I spend a uh, momentum for the third dice? Sure. And I have a focus in hand phasers. Mm -hmm. Very nice. You get a momentum. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and roll me uh, for you. It's going to be eight challenge die worth of damage. Okay. Uh, would you like to spend a momentum to maybe re-roll those zeros? <laughs> yeah. Go right ahead. Okay. So, six is enough. So, Rollins, you sprint forward towards Morris. Uh, you see that he's under fire. And uh, you pull out your phase pistol and you take a carefully aimed shot. You hit the creature's center mass, and the creature falls uh, prone onto the ground, stunned. Yeah. But yeah, that uh, that is the player's turn. And it is at this point that several more things happen at the same time. So, Rollins, uh, you didn't exactly look up. So, one of the creatures falls on you. And, uh, Moose, how you doing, buddy? So we'll start with Moose. Uh, so let's see. All right, Moose, if you want to uh, hit it back with your own oh. melee attack, as long as you yeah. score one success, you may do so. Uh, that's fitness security? Uh, it is a daring insecurity. Daring insecurity, okay. Um, <laughs> Mako training is focus? Yeah. I imagine nice. it drops down, punches me in the face, and I just like slowly turn back with its face still against my cheek, and I'm like, you fucked up. <laughs> Alright, well, go ahead and roll me your uh, unarmed damage, please. Yeah, that should be a five. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have mean right hook, by the way. Okay, noted. Alright, so you're at four. Would you like to either spend momentum to re-roll those zeros, or give me one momentum for a guaranteed plus one? Uh... You guys fine with the momentum for extra damage? I, I would re yeah, I would yeah, I'd, that's a guaranteed yeah. knockout. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh so yeah, I'll do is it the reroll of damage I'm taking? Uh you can do either, they just both cost momentum. I'll do the reroll because that's you know, I could You got more further. potential. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. And yeah. Ooh. Very nice. So, uh, you know, the creature drops onto you, and you're like a, uh, for lack of a better descriptor, you're like the rock. Uh, he, he hits you, <laughs> he, uh, he, he looks at you very confused, and you just turn slowly, give him the biggest shit-eating grin ever, and then you deliver your own right hook, and he literally spirals through the air as he gets sent over into the wall and collapses unconscious. I like to imagine that he bounced and then spiraled. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so up next, we're going to handle Rollins. Uh, Rollins, your number to beat... Wow, these guys are not rolling great. Uh, your number to beat is... You need two successes here. Uh, what was the roll again? Uh, daring security. Ooh, okay. Uh, so you are going to get hit by this. And you're going to take four stress damage as you two are knocked prone. And I'm going to make the complication that in the process of you falling or getting knocked down, uh, your phase pistol is knocked out of your hand and away back towards the captain. Noob! Do they do the anime equivalent of both punching each other at the same time? Uh, sort of. But the creature doesn't seem to take any damage, because he did succeed. Um, but it is the player's turn. So for Liza, Moose, Voss... Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go. Okay. I was going to say, probably, yeah, defend. Doctor needs to defend um, I'll use minor action to move. You can say it was like up to six. 
uh, up to thirty uh, six squares or thirty feet. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I'll move like here as my minor action. Okay. Um. Then I'll use another uh, a momentum for another minor action to draw my phaser, my phase pistol, and fire. All right. Control security difficulty two. Yeah. Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, unless you want a determination reroll that. No, nah, I've already spent mine, so. Yeah. So yeah, uh, you you just can't line up a shot. Apparently the one that uh, tried to get a beat on you is it's a wily creature. Um, so yeah, uh, that is your turn. And that means it comes back around to the creature's turn. And uh, hey Voss, how you doing? Bring it. All right, so from this crate to your immediate left, uh, they attempt to basically uh, slam you to the ground. And as long as you roll at least one success, uh, you can hit them instead of them hitting you. Okay, you want me to control security? Uh, daring security. Daring security, just as good. Matt? Uh... So this is daring. Mm -hmm. I have a focus of composure. Sure, if you want to calmly punch him as he hits you, sure. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're, use, you're using daring, so that means I'm I'm in a stressful situation. So mm -hmm. let's do. You got the one success. That's all you need. So go ahead and roll me your unarmed attack damage, which for you I believe is a four. Yeah, do, we don't have any inflated. Uh, inflated application right now, do we? No. no. Okay, just checking, because I did roll a 19, so I just want to check. Okay, where's... I thought you were talking about sock em boppers for a second. <laughs> oh. Inflated we have a... punches, what? <laughs> we don't have... Okay, so I guess I'm just doing... Do we have a challenge dice? There macro? should be a macro for challenge die. You might have to do the check box in your setting. Yeah, I don't have it on. That shows how often the captain needs to roll stuff. Same with the techno bible. Come on, come on, computer, cooperate with me. Here we go. Computer. All right. So uh, you will do four damage to it, knocking it down in the process, but it would still be living. Well, they're all still living. You haven't killed anything, but would you like to give me a threat to either reroll that zero or to take a plus one damage, and that would put you at five? I think we've determined they don't have any resistance. Y yeah, I'll give you the threat. Okay. So, uh, very similar to Moose, uh, except that instead of tanking the hit, you just very calmly sidestep it, and as it snarls and turns to try and claw at you, you just cock your fist back and deliver it straight into its, uh, between the nose, or between the eyes, and you hear the bones almost snapping of its nose, and it crumples to the floor as well. And okay. it is now the player's turn again. So I believe uh, Moose and Voss are the only ones that haven't moved yet. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can get up to Rollins and the one that he's dealing with. Mm-hmm. And um, let's see if I hit. All right. So uh, daring security, and uh, difficulty is one. Okay, let's see how well they roll. Uh, they succeeded with two successes, but you are the actor, so yes, you do hit him. All right, I'll roll. Oh man, what is with my rolls? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll I'll give you a threat for every roll of damage if everyone's okay with that. Fine. Yeah, but, sure. But... I don't know that we want even more than that. <laughs> uh, boop. Yeah, that is enough, go. so you knock this one unconscious as well. You just kind of run up and uh, maybe do a sweep of your leg, and as it falls, you just punch it to the ground with a sickening crunch. 
I just like imagine Moose walking up to him doing what uh, they did in uh, Mission Impossible. He reloads his fists. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, for the enemy's turn, I'm actually going to spend three threat here to introduce some new NPCs. So, Doctor, uh, one for you. Oh, great. Uh, Captain, one for you. Oh, oh thanks. And uh, Moose, one for you. All right, so let's deal with the Captain first. All right, Captain, I need to see three successes here. Great. Same thing? Same thing. Still daring security. Yeah, all melee is uh, daring security. Oh, he's he's in a box. There you go. Now you can see him. <laughs> he's hiding. Okay, nope. so unfortunately, uh, you get two, which is not enough. Uh, so Voss... Oh. oh no! I haven't done my turn. You're this is an immediate action, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but okay because no, no. it rolled two successes and you scored two. It's the acting character, so right. it right, still right. succeeds. Right. I was making sure it wasn't my turn. That's right. why I was just I was asking. Okay. Uh, so you're gonna take four stress of damage as it knocks you to the floor. Mm, that's not good. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll give you the uh, the boot icon. Uh, up next, let's do Moose. Moose, the number to beat is two. Okay. Not enough. So even you with your... Ooh, this is going to be interesting because that is four, five, six damage... Uh, so do take the six stress worth of damage, but that is an injury. Uh, would you like to spend determination to avoid the injury? I already spent my determination. In that case, Moose, you are considered injured, and this is a lethal injury, meaning that if you do not receive medical treatment before this scene ends, uh, sorry, Moose, bye-bye. <laughs> uh, oh, but you are effectively out of turn order now, so you can no longer assist or do pretty much anything in combat, unfortunately. Um, and then finally we have the Doctor. Doctor, yeah. the number to beat is a three. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm probably not going to get anything, but it's fine. Yeah, not enough. So even uh, even you, uh, you're going to take four stress worth of damage, and yep. you are also knocked prone. Hopefully. Alrighty. So finally, uh, Voss, it is now your actually turn. Actually turn. Your actual turn. Uh, you know, we move on. Um, we're getting ro I'm getting robot -y Oh yeah, everybody's roboting. Uh, let me change servers real quick. Okay, I switched us to U.S. East. Is that any better? Yeah, I'm getting a I'm getting a full, full yeah. bars now. Okay, so I hopefully hopefully everyone's here. Um, yeah, Captain, it is your your go. Okay. Uh, let me see. So I'm, I'm pinned in. No, I'm not pinned in. I can move to the side, can't I not? Uh, you have to use your miner to stand up. Oh, I'm on my ass. Mm -hmm. You are correct, sir. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and stand up. Okay. And that's my bonus, so I can't pull my weapon. So, well, you could spend a threat for the additional miner. No, no. No more threat for you, sir. No more. <laughs> I'm going to freaking shellac this dude as hard as I can. All right. Go ahead. Daring security. And uh, let's see what you get. Hey, daring. Security. Ah. All right. So it has to roll two successes here. 
Oh. It does. Uh, so here's what happens, Captain. It does? Uh, it does, because that is a, a natural one. So it does get the two oh, successes. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. I did not see that it was a one one. So, Captain, uh, because there's complications involved here, I'm going to say that you are actually going to take five stress damage, and you are also now injured. The okay. Oof. That's not cool. good for the team. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh the good news, if you could call it that, is it's a new round of combat, so everybody could start going again. Oh, could he do determination to avoid Oh yeah, the yeah. Uh Voss, if you wanted to spend your determination to avoid the injury, you can. You would still take the stress damage, but you would st- uh, still be able to act uh, during this uh, this combat. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I can use my determination. Okay. So uh, you will still be able to operate then. Okay. I have a value that would apply even if I wanted to use a value. <laughs> Nothing right. surprises me in space. <laughs> okay, so except um, surprise vampires. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is uh, this, Buck Rogers? Yeah. So uh, anyone can go besides Moose because Moose is injured, uh, unfortunately. There, well, there am I the only? People... Am I the only one prone right now? Uh, no. Uh, Rollins no. is prone as well. Okay. There's some good news. Since they're lethal attacks, he loses a threat every time he attacks us. Mm-hmm. And everyone, but everyone's getting promotions. Not <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. funny. So, like, can you fire from prone? I, I know I, I'd have to like roll over to my phaser. I would say, well, remember your phaser got knocked away towards the captain. Right, right, yeah. So I'd have to roll towards the captain to get the phaser. To... So I would say that you could conceivably crawl or wiggle your way towards the phaser. However, to get it and fire on the same turn, uh, still from prone, you're going to have to give me at least one threat to do it. And if you do, the complication range will increase uh, to a 18 to 20. And if you roll a complication, you will hit Moose. What if I, what if I pull Moose's phaser? Uh, same sort of deal. Uh, he is, well, I guess he's, he's injured, so he kind of, uh, falls to the ground. So, same deal. Uh, you would have to give me the one threat, but the complication range would not increase. Well, can I step in here? Sure. Uh, we all get to go before the aliens do again, right? Since... Well, it is the so player's turn, their yes. initiative. It, it is the player's turn, so any of you can so- go. I, I recommend we let someone who doesn't need to spend as much stuff for minor actions go now so we can build up some momentum so that you can do that without giving him more threat. And uh, to answer your question, Moose, uh, if someone does the first aid task on you, then yes, you could come back into the fight. However, you wouldn't want to take another injury. Hmm. Um, and there are two uh, bags on for Liza. Mm-hmm. I guess there's two over there with y'all, but that's two, I guess it's two on two either way. Or this and, is, and we don't know about the guys on for Liza other than hearing some well, scuffle. No. Well, so, you would have heard face pistol fire, right? So I think Morris yeah, something's knows. Up. Morris could look and see that there there's two on for Liza. Oh, I, I absolutely know. So, um. Do y'all mind if I go? Go. Oh, sure. Alright, I'm going to pull my phaser mm-hmm. and aim it at um, the, uh, the the baddie next to Frilliza. Okay. So, control security, difficulty two. Can I collaborate? No, I'm just not. Very nice, you do hit. Go ahead and roll me for you at six challenge die. All right, would you like to re-roll that with threat? Um, hmm. I 
think I do. All right. So it's four. And that cool. is enough. Uh, you take down the one that just recently knocked down for Lizza. Uh, your phase pistol impacts it, uh, we'll say, in the leg, and it sort of falls to the side clutching it, but it is stunned. All right. And uh, Rollins, uh, your quick to action no longer applies here, unfortunately. So unless anyone would like to give me two threat to retain the initiative, uh, it is going to be the uh, alien's turn. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's what you meant when you were saying collaborate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the talent. Uh, well, you can substitute threat for that, but yeah, no, I think yeah. I think we do need some. Uh, I'm going to say the one that's uh, near the captain is going to attack the captain. Thanks. No, not the captain. Hey, promotions for... <laughs> Alright, captain. Uh, this is very important. Uh, you need to roll me two successes here. Yeah. I, have... I, I think you give him one threat for a third die here. It's a whole other guy. It also keeps you from dying. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, yeah. I don't have much choice in that. Because, uh, I'm not real beefy beefy. I'm rolling three. All right. And three is enough. Uh, because it is an opposed roll, you may now roll your unarmed attack damage. So four challenge dice, please. And we get a momentum. You actually yeah. get two momentum. Oh, boy. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Just Are you wow. serious? Do you want to I mean, spend have... that momentum? To yeah, record? yeah. We're gonna, I'm gonna have to do it, or I'm I'm pretty much screwed either way. Well, we've been gone. I mean, we could use I mean, the two moment. Go twice for a couple things. If you want to reroll, yeah. Okay. All right. I so guess you my will. First do... officer's gonna have a new job really fast. Yeah. So <laughs> he ain't even here yet. I will say, because uh, you guys have figured out by now, they don't have resistance. If you give me that momentum. The remaining momentum and a threat, you will put this thing down. I'd say dead because this is the his captain. turn, right? This is the captain's turn. No, no, no this, this is, is the. Oh, wait, no, yeah, oh, this, no, this is, is his turn. Yes. Yeah, this is his turn. So we go back into ours. So, so we probably don't want to give him more threat. Maybe, maybe Voss goes next or something. Yeah, no, nope. I'm gonna use my attack try to take him out because I'm not going to give any more threat. Okay. Captain doesn't uh Captain doesn't want to put his people in any more further harm than he can than, than he needs to. All right. In that case, uh it is the player's turn again. So, you know, the the creature tanks the hit, still standing. Uh you did maybe superficial damage, unfortunately. Uh but anyone besides Moose and Morris can go. Hmm. Um I probably want to use my minor action so I can stand up. Okay. Um, so I'll go, so I'll use my minor action to stand. Mm -hmm. Then... Hmm. You do have your phase pistol out. Yeah. Um... Hmm. I'll spend a momentum to get another minor action so I can aim. Okay. And I'll try and fire at this other one that's over here. Alrighty. So, control security, difficulty 2, and you can re-roll one of the d20s. Okay. Alright. Might want to re-roll that 0. Yep. Let's see, so slash. Hey, yep, that makes two successes. Alright, so go ahead and roll me the 6 challenge die to see how effective your shot is. And that's enough. So you uh, stand up, twirl on the spot, uh, pick your target, and uh, he goes down. Alrighty. Uh, I know you have to bug out here in like a couple minutes, so just let me know when you leave and I'll take over. Okay, um, sure. But yeah, it is now the player's turn. Uh, either Captain or Rollins can go. Okay. So I got a live guy in front of me. So I'll go ahead and try to take this guy out. 
Okay. Are you punching him or are you uh, shooting with the phaser? Uh, if I can pull the phaser, I'm going to get more damage on him. And he doesn't have any cover, so I've just I got a better chance. I think I'm going to do the phaser. Okay, that's going to be a control security difficulty too. Control security in this time because I don't have... Yep, no, no bonus there. No focus. That's <laughs> enough. All right, go ahead and roll me a six challenge die worth of damage. Come here, you space vampire bastard. <laughs> All right, I will say that if you give me a threat, you will put it down. <sighs> yeah, because I can't take another hit from him. Right. Wait, didn't he... Oh, wait, because never mind. Magic number's five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All righty. So, uh, the remaining creature, as it rolls back around, the remaining creature uh, sees the writing on the wall and is actually going to flee combat. So, uh, you guys are out of turn order, but uh, Master Chief, before I'm... you go, if you've got the yeah. time, run over and heal Moose. Yeah, Yannick! I... I, I can make the time. Yeah. I imagine, like, the wound is, it's, they like, long, fingery claws. It's, like, deep, and, like, underneath his, like, in his abdomen there, it's, like, he's, like, holding, like, oh, that's an organ. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be a daring plus medicine task with a difficulty oh of one. My daring is a seven, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> oh, no. I thought you dumb. <laughs> What's the take? Hey, hey, can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah. 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 All right. I had to switch to my phone. Uh, I've lost Wi-Fi somehow. Oh. Your moose die. <laughs> um, emergency medicine will definitely apply as a focus. Uh huh. Okay. Please, for the love of God, you get oh. a momentum, and that is enough. You oh. are able to stabilize moose. <sighs> okay. Cool. <laughs> Just holding this out with one hand, like thanks, doc. Appreciate it. Yeah, just try to keep yourself out of trouble while we're still here. I'll try. No promises. All right. And with that, before we continue with the scene, I think this is a perfect time for a 10-minute break. So uh, we will be back in 10 minutes. All righty.
everything is unmuted so uh we pick things right back up uh you have about six or seven i think it's seven or eight actually seven or eight of these uh stunned aliens uh that are otherwise unconscious for the moment you still have the uh glowing green pillar and as a reminder there is a tractor beam currently uh locked onto the avenger were we able to disable it uh, no, right before you started to try to disable it, that's when these things attacked. Well, we need to restrain... Get that turned off. <laughs> I wonder why we didn't detect their life signs before we entered. Would you uh, like to do a scan they're... of them now? Well, if you want to scan, can I, like, tie them up or looking around from a... Uh, Morris wouldn't know where to start uh, with a medical scan. Well, let's uh, let's have Forliza do it, and uh, I'll roll for Forliza. All right, so he's just gonna roll a uh, reason medicine. He has a focus. Uh, survey says he gets two successes, and he reports. 
Well, uh, this is interesting, Captain. Uh, appears that uh, these creatures are uh, able to put themselves in a metabolic state, unlike a or not unlike a coma, and that's probably why we didn't detect them. Is that they were, for lack of a better term, sleeping. Hey. Ooh. Wonder what woke him up. Interesting. Now that we know this is an issue, can we alter our scanners to detect that there's any additional? I can certainly try, sir. Well, let's work on that. All right, so for Lizza, we'll uh, stay close, but he'll keep an eye out and start messing with his tricorder to see what he can do. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? We got to get over to the console and try to get that out of the tractor beam because it's probably still getting pulled in, isn't it? Mm hmm. I might enlist Morris to help me restrain the unconscious body. Well, my question would be what are you restraining them with? Yeah, that's my question too. Um, uh, is there anything <laughs> available around or. I mean, you could clothes? always tear up the conduits that are leading from the console to the uh, the pillar. No, no, no. Oh, no, let's not do far, that. How far um, is the shuttle from the entrance here? Because the shuttle probably has some rope. Uh, uh, not enough to tie up seven or eight people. My, my survival training was pretty recent. I'll just pull out, like, whatever little utility knife I have. Like, not enough to count as a weapon. Mm -hmm. And just rip up my uniform to tie them up. Okay. Well, they have clothing, too, right? Nope. Oh, Okay. <laughs> So, like, yeah, I'll just, like, take the sleeves off and start making strips that we can tie up with. It's not perfect. It's not going to be super strong, yeah. but it's something. Okay. Hey, you know, the same. it is something. Moose will do the same. He'll just cut off the top part of his whole entire uniform because he has the undershirt on. He's like, like here, take it. Yep. I hate so, this uniform. It's too constricted anyways. Say, uh, Rollins and Morris, you corral the, uh, the unconscious and do a pile here. Uh, but Moose, uh, when you return to the console, uh, you realize that uh, the translation uh, from Star... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Staros? Uh, oh, yeah. He has finally finished a translation. And sure enough, uh, if you pull that lever uh, that I indicated earlier, it will shut off uh, whatever the power source is. However, uh, he goes on to say... There's there's something odd here, sir. It's something that could be either a driver, an occupant, uh, a user. I, I don't really know what it means, but it is indicated on that lever. Oh, nothing ventured, nothing gained, and he'll just pull a lever down. Okay. So you pull the lever down, and the effect is immediate. The glowing conduit that trails from the console to the... Uh, to the tube uh, begins to more or less stop glowing and all of you begin to feel the asteroid shaking and Staros mm -hmm. reports uh, well good news bad news sir good news the tractor beam's gone bad news you all are falling towards the black hole and he'll slowly pull the lever back up <laughs> so you try to push the lever back up and it's not going is there anything on the uh, console to uh, restart? Uh, there is not, unfortunately. Hotwire the lever. Yeah, if you um, wanna, if you do want to try and get it back on, it will involve some jury rigging. Yeah, I'll try that, I guess. Okay, this is going to be a daring engineering uh, difficulty. I have how much threat remaining? I'm going to make this a difficulty four task with my last threat. And the complication range is 19 to 20. Oh, man, I don't have determination for this either, guys. Uh, I can assist if people... This is my engineering is three, I can... Yeah, anyone with an engineering go. of three or higher may assist him, but only one of you may assist. Are you guys okay with me using the momentum for uh, one dice? Yes. Oh. Is this me oh, trying to, to leave? Yeah. yeah. Right. And what's the roll? What are we rolling on? Daring engineering. I got 13. Engineering. Going once, going twice. 13, 14. Oh, I saw, I saw one of our momentum tokens. It was obscure. It's like, what's this giant? 
<laughs> yeah. Um, I also like, have uh, 13, so... Oh, um, nice. Emergency Why repairs, no? electric plasma system... You've got a focus. Okay. And... Hey. Very nice. Oh, wow. Ah! So yeah, Captain, just don't roll a complication. It's all you have to do. Well, I'm gonna have, uh... I'm gonna have Rollins assist, because, well... Oh. He's got the same value, and I'm the captain. <laughs> All right, Rollins, don't roll a complication. You didn't roll a complication. Good job. So you get two momentum. And yeah, Moose, uh, you very, with Rollins' help, you begin ripping out wires, uh, patching it, making bypasses, and the shaking of the asteroid does stop somewhat. And, uh, Mr. Storos, back on the Avenger reports, uh, sir, you've somewhat stabilized, but uh, whatever equilibrium that Balarock was in is gone. You've definitely bought yourself some time, but uh, it is still falling towards the, the black hole, albeit slowly. Let's go look at the captain and smile and just say, if the ladies don't find you handsome, at least they can find you handy. He's just going to close the panel, and then he's like, up, oh, let's put a pattern, shall we? Let's uh, let's at least get or make an attempt to retrieve the life form that is in the chamber. It's too late for it now, for us to save anything else now. So we'll run back to the pillar, mm -hmm. and now with the conversion done, can we read the local panel that is on the pillar? Yes, and it quite literally says "release lever." Uh. Let's go ahead and hit that button, do a quick scan with the, medi uh, the medical tricorder, make sure it's not going to kill anybody if we take it back, to kill us all if we take it back to the ship, and let's get out of here. Alrighty, so who is pulling the lever? Gronk. Yeah. Moose will do it. Moose will do it. Alright, so Moose, you uh, step up to the pillar, uh, you go to pull it, and immediately uh, the sensation of the rock shaking happens again. And this time, the power goes out for good. Uh, but the good news is that the normally opaque surface of this tube begins to become less cloudy. Uh, it swirls and becomes transparent. And inside, you see what appears to be a, a humanoid of some sort. Um, you can't really make out whether they're male or female. Um, they are definitely humanoid in nature, so two arms, two legs, a head. Um, they have some form of technology, uh, some form of like a uh, an enhanced headgear, if that makes any sense. Um, and their eyes are currently closed. Uh, I would say that they kind of look like a, a human if they had futuristic headwear, if that makes any sense. Um, mm. But yeah, uh, for Lizza, immediately uh, steps up and runs a scan. And I'll go ahead and roll for him. Survey says he gets you a momentum, and uh, he says, uh, "Sirs, uh, this is actually quite fascinating. Uh, it, this android is highly sophisticated. It it has molecule-sized microprocessors, and I'm detecting billions of connected mechanisms. And this this is." Moose, are you seeing this too? And he shows you the scan. And Moose, you're you're seeing that uh, apparently this android also has things like pheromones and a neural pattern, and mm. you know things that would indicate that this is not your ordinary android. Uh, has the chamber opened up yet? Uh, yes. At this point, with a hiss, it opens up, revealing and allowing access to this android. Yay, quarantine. I immediately uh, fireman carry. Okay. <laughs> Toss the android over my shoulder. They're like, well, are we leaving? Yes, let's get out of here. All right. So, Are we leaving the other entities? Yeah, they're on their own. Um, do I see the other one kicking around somewhere? Nope. We don't have the room. We don't uh, have the room. Yeah, yeah we're out of here. <laughs> oh, we don't. Do we not have the room in the shuttle? No, you can probably take this android, and that's about it. 
Um, Shuttle pods, I think, are only six six people at the max. I think. Yeah, it's it's pretty right, tight and there's some floor room. But I mean, do we we could maybe try to transport something? We haven't looked in any of these boxes. Well, I will remind you that the asteroid is shaking it, again. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go. Right. And the pod doesn't have a whole bunch of power, so. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's let's get to the pod, but um, stabilize the asteroid with our tractor beams, our brand new tractor beams. Maybe. Uh, so, for sake of argument, uh, you guys rush back to the shuttle pod. You hop inside. You. Uh, put your android friend uh, against one of the walls. You seal the hatch, and you begin powering things up. And, uh, Morris, I'd like you to roll me a uh, insight con, please. Uh, difficulty one. Uh, helm operation or improvisation coming into play? Uh, both would apply. And I will apologize. Apparently my neighbors are doing something with a lawnmower. I don't know what. So if that's coming, coming through, in. I do apologize. Hey! Very nice. So you get two momentum. And what I'll say is, is you notice that one of the consoles uh, that you would normally use for flight operation has been torn out, probably by the one that ran away. Oh! Um, can I still fly? I will say if you spend two momentum to create an advantage... Uh, there will be a backup system you can use. I. Oh, we don't have much yeah, choice. You guys... Yeah. Um, <laughs> just skinny bastards. I say, and I reach over and I I fix whatever I need to so I can fly the dang shuttle. All right. Can so... I ask the doctor to see if. Oh, go ahead. Like, well, uh, is one in the ship hiding or on the ship or something? Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure we would have hit it by now, sir. It's not exactly uh, roomy in here. Okay. Well, you know, we updated our scanners. Oh, oh I, I, as I'm fixing it, I'll say they're smarter than they look. I'll give them that. Moose is just going to, once the shuttle pod gets out of Admiral, he's going to vent the airlock above the shuttle, just in case it's high up there. Fair. All right. So, uh, of course, I don't have a cinematic shot of this, but if you will imagine... Uh, as the shuttle pod flies away from this ball of rock, uh, you kind of maybe see behind the shuttle this rock falling into the event horizon uh, before anyone can tractor it, and it quite literally vanishes from view as it is torn apart uh, by the black hole. But uh, you guys, you make it back safe and sound to the uh, to the Avenger, and I'm assuming you want to do decontamination yeah. <laughs> yeah yes we're going to go to decontamination okay. but what we will do is we're going to leave this creature be or this this android mm -hmm. in the shuttle pod sealed okay. with security outside of it okay uh, until yeah, we're done with decon and everything else because we want an enclosed environment that's not with us, mm -hmm. and if it gets stupid, we can just freaking drop out. We can just eject the pod with the creature or with the android in it until we're done. Until all my senior staff's done, I don't want anybody messing with it. Okay. So Wait, you're uh, sending. Oh, go ahead. So I'm just like trying to get this right. You're sending guys in a contaminated area to stand guard while we decon. What the shuttle bay should not. The shuttle, shuttle bay should be. Shuttle Bay is linked directly to Decon. Right. Uh, we we don't all have to go through Decon at the same time. We could we can have guards. Right. You could cycle. You could cycle it. Okay. All right. Well, my question is, how is Decon ever done on the Shuttle Bay? Then I thought they had some kind of atmosphere that did that. It's one of those things in Enterprise where Decon is a good idea, but does it actually do anything? Who knows. Um, but you know, sake of argument, you guys go through decon, and by the time you're done, uh, the android, the creature, has not woken up at this point. Nice. So I guess okay. my question is, uh, what would you like to do at this point? Do we even know if that thing can live in our environment? It was in a stasis tube of some. 
Well, if it's ever get a reading of what's, if it's what an was advanced machine. Oh, it's pure Android. It's not cyborg. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Feliza says, yes, uh, even though it's highly advanced, I, I think it actually could survive in many environments. Though maybe maybe not a, a class Y demon planet. And, I mean, is it emitting any signal? I wonder what its relationship with that a creature, because we're in town. Oh, he's dropping out again. Yeah, you're dropping out again, Morris. I'm I'm curious what the android's relationship is with that alien species we encountered. Was it its their was it their prisoner, their creation? Their god? They seemed, they seemed intelligent enough to rip out the navigational panel, but we don't know anything about them. They decided to stay and none of them evacuated, so me they were squatters. You know, did we detect any ships leaving? Did we detect any vessels taking off from the asteroid besides us? Nope. You know, either they were in a race that landed on the asteroid to explore and scavenge, or they... I don't know. They could have been other prisoners that got freed and... We left them to a horrible fate. Unfortunately, we didn't have much choice. We didn't too late. talk to them. And Felissa just kind of motions at you, Moose. I think that if they wanted to talk, they would have done so. So, let's do... Uh, let's take this creature now, or this android... And at least do some topical uh, decon. And then probably, if it's an android, who wants first crack at it? My medical or my engineer? I, I can deal with it. I have uh, experience with a lot of computer technology and experimental design. So uh, we've, hey. we've regained our stress by this point, right? Yes, your stress has returned to normal. The other thing is, you uh, we would probably want to prepare a space uh, with. I don't think we would want just the the uh, brig. We would want some kind of area with also technical equipment in case we need to communicate or do something like that with this android. So something that might be something the engineer, my chief engineer, would want to prep while we get this thing deconned. Second. Uh... Dairy uh, computer cork would work, work fine. That's where Betty's housed. You're Actually, comfortable with it? I'm comfortable with it. I'd like to make sure that we have some security officers around. Oh, yes. Most we definitely. don't know the disposition when it wakes up. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, this was linked to the device that was doing communication. Is it sending out a signal now? No, it is not. It might be also the creature that was generating the power. Yeah. Uh, Captain, with your permission, rather than return to the bridge, I think I will um, reinstall the flight controls to the shuttle. Agreed. Go ahead and start the repairs. Uh, Moose will hit the panel on the wall there. Uh, Crewman Jensen. Yes, sir. Report to Shuttle Bay. Uh, you'll be under the command of Ensign Morris to do some work on Shuttle Pod 1. Sir, if I might be so bold, what the hell happened this time? He'll fill you in. Roger that, sir. And yeah, I'm trying to think what would be a good map for this. Uh, you know what, let's just let's use, let's use the cargo bay. It's probably the closest thing we have for this. Alright, so Moose, I know you're present because you're the one... Uh, basically taking a whack at this android. Uh, who else would be present? I mean, normally for Liza would be, but since his player is not here and I don't want to play him too much, um, I'd rather him not be here. But I believe you have other supporting medical staff if someone wants to play them. Okay. I guess I'll be supporting medical staff because the captain is going to be on the bridge. Continuing on with their trek to the 
original location that we were sent to. Roger that. As well as updating, as well as updating Starfleet with what we found. Gotcha. Uh, looking at the supporting character list, it looks like Shy Vec uh, doesn't have art, but Shy Vec apparently is a an ensign. Mm, excuse me. That does have uh, xenobiology and routine care. There we go. Digging it. All right. So, uh, Moose, tell me, tell me a little bit about your uh, process to work on this android. Uh, he's going to do a full uh, engineering scan, get all the list of the components that are running, uh, look for any power source and any uh, connections that have power versus connections that don't, to see if there's anything that would be, you know, attached or disconnected that he could reconnect to or enable it. Okay. Uh, at, the, at the same time, broadcasting uh, a, a wide range of signals to see if he could trigger any auto response. Okay, that's... That's going to be probably some momentum on obtained information. So let's start with the basics. I'd like you to roll me a insight plus engineering. The difficulty here is a three. And Shyvek may assist you with a insight medicine. Right. And am I using the ship's computer for this? Uh, sure, I'll give you the computer as an assist. The computer will assist you with, we'll say, sensors and engineering. You guys okay with one momentum being used for a third dice? Yes. Yeah. Where do I not see the Shyvek? Uh, she should be under supporting characters. Zora Shyvek. Oh, okay. I'm looking for their whole name. Uh, uh confirm the roll. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be Insight Medicine. Insight. And I have a focus. You do indeed. And hey. xenobiology. Wow. All right. That's four wow. successes. All right. Five successes. So you get two momentum back. Oh, and uh, yeah, Moose, to answer at least partial questions, uh, there is indeed a power source. Uh, I liken it to be sort of like Iron Man's uh, arc reactor. Uh, it is located where a heart would normally be on a normal humanoid. And what you notice is that... Uh, well, you played Mass Effect 3, right? Mm -hmm. So, spoilers if anyone hasn't played it by now. Um, but basically, you remember the green ending where everyone went both tech and bio <laughs> at the same time? Yeah, a synthetic. Synthetic, yeah. So that's basically what you're seeing here is that this arc reactor slash heart is synthetic in origin. And the deeper you look, the more you see that this is very much... Um, at a molecular level uh, that this creature has been converted from a normal, quote-unquote, humanoid, whatever they or their original species was, into this android. Uh, he's just going to check to see if anything's been moving off the body, like anything that could cause uh, a conversion to occur. Uh, if you spend a momentum, I will answer that question. I'll do that, because I want to make sure we're safe. <laughs> okay. So, the uh, good news is, is it does not appear to be really interacting with the surrounding space or with you, or really anything or anyone. Uh, it just sort of is a uh, shut-off android at the moment. Okay. And um, I guess the next momentum is going to be, do I find it's on-off switch or connectors? Uh, I will say that uh, between you and Shyvek, uh, you do find what could be the equivalent of an on-off switch. And it's the equivalent of taking uh, shock paddles and applying them to the chest of like a defibrillating... Eh, you know what I'm trying to say. A, uh, a patient that's having a heart attack. You know, you, you defib them with the paddles and it, it shocks their heart uh, back into moving. Uh, you guys okay if I ask one more question? Yeah. All right. Um, I able to access its memory banks by connecting Betty to it. I would say it is possible. It's unlikely, but it is possible. But it would like be a, a separate role. It's like a wireless connection. Wireless would increase the difficulty. Okay. All right, well, I 
ask that question. So is this that. independent? Is this this is an independent core, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, Betty. Betty. Betty only has monitoring of the computer core, but she has no access to write or override um, anything outside of the systems I gave her access to, which were kept isolated from the main core. All right. Um, just going to tell uh, our nice little nurse to uh, and the security guards to line up on the catwalk and get ready just in case. And I'm going to defib. All right. So this is going to be a daring engineering difficulty two, and for reasons that could become apparent if you roll complications, the complication range is going to be seventeen to twenty. Just out of curiosity, before he rolls this, mm -hmm. a giant door in the back, is that just the art, or does that actually have an uh, impact in, in this? We'll say oh, that, yeah, if you, if you really need to, you could de decompress the bay and flush it out to space. Sweet. I was just making sure. <laughs> just so you know, Moose in there. <laughs> um, Welcome to Starfleet. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys okay with the last dice being used for a third dice, just to make sure? Works or Let's find out. Sure. Right. And Moose gets his airway collapsed by a punch. <laughs> <laughs> See, that laugh is not... <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, okay, so I have a focus for this. Uh, emergency repairs, electric plasma systems. I would say because you're literally shocking it back to life, EPS would apply. <laughs> yes. And he's just going to say, Claire... So, I will say that when you go to shock this thing, nothing happens. Okay. Hmm. I can't try that again. Try turning it off and back on again. <laughs> uh... I, I just use a little power source that was handy around, right? Just like a little... It's own battery that I use to shock her, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to tap into the the main pl uh, plasma line of the ship. Oh, dear. Okay. Oh, my. That's going to be <laughs> still a daring engineering. This time, the difficulty will be reduced, because this is the equivalent of creating an advantage. So, difficulty is a 1, uh, but the complication range does increase to 16 to 20. Oh, wait. Well, the complication was increased before, right? Yep. 19 I rolled. Yep. I have taken note of that, not to worry. Alright. You actually also rolled a 17, which was also a complication. <laughs> oh god, we're gonna die. I, I'm gonna try it again, and tell Betty to cut feeds if anything goes awry. Okay. And focus still, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yep. Hey, you get a momentum. So, several things happen at once. Uh, you shock the android to life, and immediately, you, eh, immediately you're seeing that the arc reactor slash heart is beginning to spool up and feed power uh, to the rest of the body. However, at that same moment, uh, Betty, uh, the computer, uh, begins so uh, sounding a klaxon alarm. And if you look on a, a readout, you see that uh, something is intruding on the computer core. And before you can really react, uh, the nearest comm unit on the wall is overwritten by the computer core. And out of it comes a voice. And the voice says, Who are you, and why are you trying to kill me? Well, that's not the voice I gave Betty, but close enough. Um, name's Moose. Not trying to kill you. Trying to jump start you he just pokes the body he's like i'm guessing this is you that is a shell that i use yes uh, well try to turn it on well in the process of you doing that you've blown out some of my key systems oh i'm half tempted to i have quite a bit of data here according to this computer Tell me, why shouldn't I, uh, you know, blow you up? Well, for two reasons. One, 
we pulled you out of some containment unit, and two, you don't have access to that sub-feature of the ship. I've saw to that. Hmm. Seems you're right. Very well, but know that uh, if you injure that shell any further, I will take offense. Ma'am, I did not mean to injure. I just wanted to simply bring online. I will work to repair. If you can give me assistance, I will be glad to restore any damage I may have caused. So there is no verbal reply, but on that same sort of console with the readout, uh, you see a very advanced and very detailed schematic of the Android pop up, and it has highlighted several areas that are in red, and you just basically need to follow its instructions to do so. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get to work. I'll, uh, I'll send a, a text message up to the captain, and it's like, progress! <laughs> That's all it says. <laughs> Step mm. one, repair the wrist-mounted missile launchers. <laughs> <laughs> Tank missile. <laughs> we have we have an AI, an AI running around in part of the computer system, even though it's independent. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> your message to the captain is, progress? Yep. So oh my God. do we know where the core is, Betty's core? Um, It's in the same room. Oh, okay. So am I rolling anything, or is it like... I mean, we're close enough to the end of the session that I'll just say that it maybe takes you four or five hours, and you're berated almost the entire time because you're not fast enough, you're not dexterous enough, but eventually you do effect repairs. And the AI says, well, that only took forever. Very well. I understand that you are a species with a chain of command. I believe the... What is it? Human expression is, take me to your leader. It's actually human. That's what we say. It's just bullshit the computer. <laughs> it doesn't reply. Uh, but the android itself uh, does begin to sit up. And its eyes open. It blinks a few times. And uh, it says, as I said, take me to your leader. Uh, we've got to follow a couple of protocols first. Um, first, Jim, is it closed? Is it has clothing? Yeah. Um, I would say it has some form of clothing, yes. Okay, good. Um, and he'll just go to the... He'll check on Betty. He wants to see her operating system is still okay. So I'd like you to roll me a Insight Engineering uh, Difficulty 3. No. I use that last momentum because this is Betty. <laughs> um... Experimental comp uh, computer technology? Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, come on. I'm going to let it succeed at cost, and the complication is uh, the AI, the Android, whatever you'd like to call it at this point, it has left some of its programming, or a copy of such, on Betty. But Betty's operating system is still there? It is, but it's almost like uh, like if you had two consciousness, it's almost like the AI's program is now taking precedence. He's just going to look at and look to her. as like, do you have a name? I do oh, not, no. All right, well. I'm just going to call you Betty for now. He's not going to be happy about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh... Who's the captain? Go ahead, chief. I got a visitor here that wants to talk to you. Well, this should be entertaining. Let me come down there. There you go. All right. So, captain, you uh, have gone down to uh, meet with the moose and the android. And yeah. Wow. Is that going to be the name of this episode? <laughs> the moose and the moose android. and the android. Yeah. Uh, no, but, uh, y by the time you arrive, uh, the android is, uh, pacing back and forth very impatiently. And, uh, when you arrive, it says, ah, finally, took you so long to get here. Mm -hmm. You're an android. Do you age? No, but it is annoying to have to wait for biologic time. Hmm. Interesting. How can I help you? Well, and he is distinctly staying a good 20 feet away. Not right. that that's probably going to make any difference, but 
subconsciously it makes them slightly bit more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I admit the fact that I require your aid. I lack a means to transport myself uh, among the stars, and I was unable to recover any memories prior to my incarceration in that, shall we call it a stasis pod. Your incarceration. Well, that's what I would call it. Uh, they, whoever they were, uh, was using my program and my this shell's abilities to regulate their power supply. Interesting. Where is the destination you would like to go? Anywhere but there. You do not know where your original source or your origin is? Unfortunately, no. All memories prior to the incarceration were either erased or are corrupted. Do you understand why or do you know why you were incarcerated? I do not. I believe this is the Starfleet expression of asylum. I will have to contact Starfleet to grant you that asylum. Right now, there is nobody chasing us, so pre asylum is not pressing at this exact moment. Hmm. More waiting. Very well. Please make sure that I receive a response within a day. I will respond as quickly as I'm allowed to. All right. So uh, the uh, while, oh, go ahead. While you're waiting for this response, you are to reside in this room and not to leave without prior permission. So the uh, the android answers by going back over to whatever table uh, Moose was operating it on. Uh, it lays back down, and then uh, Moose, you notice that the AI has moved back into the computer core. Captain. Yes. If she has been imprisoned for such a long time, and we're confining her to such a room, we're no different than who put her in that little tube. Essentially. That may be true. The problem is, we don't know why she was put in that little tube. So, until we have a better understanding as to why it was limited, I don't want her out in, uh, among the ship. I mean, she might be rightfully imprisoned. We don't know. And we don't have a way of knowing that Brock is gone. Well, it's not my it's not my call as to whether we grant her asylum if there is not a physical currently a physical or or uh, impending danger. I have to go and talk to superiors for that. He was just. Kind of shrug, like, sure. All right. And it is at this point that we've uh, hit the end of our episode, so before we log off, uh, are there any other scenes that people would like to get out of the way? Uh, we don't have to have a scene, but obviously I would contact or contact Starfleet Command so that our next session Yeah, would by have next session, you'll, you'll have something. Cool. Uh, Moose will just set up um, a little terminal, uh, a communicator, as it were, mm -hmm. uh, with only one connection point. It can only broadcast out, can't uh, upload or anything like that there. But basically, if uh, the Android wants to talk to anyone, she can page out. Okay. I guess it'd be cool, it could be cool to work on the shuttle with Ensign, or Specialist Jensen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go to the launch bay here. So yeah, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're doing your thing. You're working alongside Jensen here, and uh, Jensen kind of looks up at you and says, You know, it's funny. Uh, we seem to be doing this quite a lot. Um, yeah, it's a new ship. Uh, by the way, uh, 
I know... Who was it that ordered her down to join me? I believe that was Moose. I know Moose said that he wanted me in command of this, but you are by far the better engineer. Um, I just fly the thing. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have assistance. It's always good to have an extra head of, set of hands. Right. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, I know we really haven't run into each other because we're on separate shifts, but uh, I guess uh, if you don't know already, I think I'm your roommate. Uh, yeah, um, glad you brought that up. I have a practice pad in my room. I drum on it sometimes. I don't want to... Oh, is Hasn't that been what an that issue is? Yet. Yeah, in my closet with my, my uniform. Uh, it's the, the board with the rubber pads on it. Um, I mean, I'll make sure not to be using it when you're trying to sleep. It hasn't come up yet, but um, that's all that is. Hmm. Hand me that uh, spanner over there. Uh, three quarter inch. Uh, no, make it a half inch. All right, I toss it over. Yeah. And yeah, you guys keep on working. And yeah, uh, I think this is a perfect opportunity. Unless Rollins, did you have anything? No, other than you know wanting to go over the security for around that thing, but okay, sounds like we're waiting on Starfleet's response to. Yeah, no, it's not getting out of. No. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, this is where we're going to end the session. So players, stick around because we have some housekeeping to do. Uh, but to anyone watching on Twitch, YouTube, or listening in on Podbean or iTunes, thank you so much. And we will see these guys next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>